seeing fish, not being able to catch them. Having this mega imaging is awesome, but then it's frustrating at the same time. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We are about to dangle, so it's gonna be a good day, but I gotta do something first. Power pole the other day, they sent me a new circuit for the poles. Uh, so something I figured out was the remote was only working when it was close to the pump itself. And I don't have very much experience with power poles. I've only had one boat that's had them. So I just started, uh, started playing around, walking around, and finally I figured out that that was close. So I called them and to see what the problem was. How do you, uh, had a technical question about my power pole blade and remote. Um, my, uh, my anchor's only going down when my remote is physically close to the pump. Um, and I have two of them. It's just, it's just one of them that's doing that. Is, is there like a, uh, antenna issue or have you had this problem happen before and i said it's probably your circuit board so they sent me another one rather quickly um, so thanks power pole we're gonna see if this works okay what am i looking for so that is the pump pop that off yep that did something I guess I need to dig a little bit more in here. Uh, some sort of little silicone thing. Uh, I should probably open the box and read some instructions. I'm not a boat mechanic. You know, back when I used to fish on Terror, I used to do a lot more boat work myself, but it's gotten a little rusty over the years. Plus, everything's changed inside of boats. How to use your prepaid return shipping label. Oh, I gotta show them the other one, I guess. Boo. Oh, this looks like a little uh, little camping meal. Ready to go. Just warm that up. No. Wow. Yeah. Somebody smart built that. Or with really tiny hands. You and I together are about to find out how easy this is. Never done this before. I have looked up nothing. I literally just called them and they sent me one of these, so I'm just gonna try to pull this circuit out of the top. I might need myself a little screwdriver situation. I'm just gonna take the knife and try to pry this other one out. Hopefully this thing doesn't blow up on me. So that green thing right there is what I'm taking out. Okay, there it goes. Popped out. So here is, I guess we'll call it the old one. It's really new. I mean, this thing's brand new, not working. Let's see if this new circuit board works. Looks like there's a little silicone packet in there to keep it dry. Okay, take the plate off. Okay. Oh, that seemed kind of easy. The circuitry's in. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Turn the power on. Okay, it worked before sometimes when it was this close. I bet I have to uh, to redesignate the the keys. I'm gonna have to hold this middle one down here. We go okay I think it's gonna work now dual blades in action right here step back oh yeah we're working now we are working baby I said it once I'll say it a hundred times there are just things that happens happen with boats no matter how new they are we adapted we overcome we're gonna put the uh, little dealios back on here and this baby's ready to dangle now. We're gonna head up uh, north. We're gonna go fish some cold water lakes, uh, or a cold water lake, deep lake. Been kind of going to some smaller lakes lately, going after uh, largemouth. It's been good, but today, I wanna try going after some, some big water fish. Uh, the conditions are good, it's not very windy, so it's good to get out on the big lake. I'm gonna try fishing some deep water with uh, some blade baits and some spoons. Just your typical winter time fishing. Uh, I did pre-spawn fishing for you guys the other day and uh, that's awesome, but I know most of you are still in like really, really cold conditions and probably not even close to pre-spawn. It's really fun for me, but sometimes you don't learn as much. We're gonna stick it to the reel today and we're gonna get out on the big water, the tough waters. 
and I might even get a Lunkers TV to come help me out a little backup today so let's get up there now that we got our dual poles get to dangling baby and we're here baby this water is down and it is dirty it is down and dirty looks like absolute chocolate doo-doo to be honest with you for what it should be a hundred percent not what I was thinking and what I was wanting for the stuff we're gonna be fishing so yikes I don't really know might have to maybe do some cranking or something that's gonna attract these fish's attention but this water should not be brown it should be like greenish and clear Always an adventurous dangle with me and Lunkers TV. Today I'm sure will be no different. Update for y'all, we just uh, found a couple fish we've been dangling on. I had one on and it came off. This water's just muddy. Dust stalker, your stereotypical gold spoon. And just going up and down with it lightly. Look at that red caterpillar on my face. Come out of my shell here. Folks, folks. <laughs> I've been around for a few dangles in my day and I think I'm smart enough to know now that it is not good. I mean I knew right when I put the boat in the water, I told you guys tomorrow, the water was muddy, which was not what I was expecting. The worst conditions you can fish, cold, muddy water. Especially in these conditions where we have to fish vertically and it's uh, just to keep it right in front of their face because they can't see and they're, they're cold, super tough dangle not the right conditions we're gonna just pack it in. um had a lot of encouragement from my friend back here that uh also forgot his jacket that's that's my jacket right there um but this is not a good idea and i would have to concur it's time to send it send it home fish somewhere else do something different a, a warm cup of coffee right now sounds great but in this spot right here many years ago still this holds the record for my biggest smallmouth ever. And it was doing this, clear water, spooning, on ledges deep, about 35 feet of water. But guess what? Water was clean. It's not clean, so they can't see it coming up over those rocks, and you have to get it, just dangle it right, and it's not good, so. You ready, Rob? You ready? You've only been asking me that for the last two hours. So, you ready, buddy? I'm like, I'm like the little uh, common sense person that's been sitting in the back looking at the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did mark some fish though. He marked a, a rock pile and then we went back and that's where I had my one fish on. But, you know, there wasn't, <laughs> they weren't exactly munching hard. <laughs> to a new and misty day now. I was so disappointed in the lake, y'all. Wanted to go up there, hoping there was clear water, and there was not. That's the only thing that helps you out when it's cold, uh, is having that clear water the fish can see. So when you pause your bait, they're like, oh, that's something I can get. I can go, I can take my time, swim my slow little swim over to the bait and grab it, and when it's muddy, they can't see it uh, long enough to, to really make it a, a, a decision with their little brains to go over there and grab that. So I, I'm just, I think I'm giving up on, uh, on North Texas for bass for a minute. I grew up around here. I've been racking my brain, going back in memories. I've been thinking about the rains. I've had some of my biggest sacks up here in uh, late February. But right now, without the clear water, I just can't think of a time where I've caught them up here in that cold muddiness this time of year. It just doesn't happen. I was able to get some hours on the engine, which I'm supposed to be doing, so I'm about halfway to breaking in the motor. But today, I thought, you know what, why not give it a dangle? I'm going to try to go after some uh, crappie and some, some white bass. And I also, there's one more thing I wanted to go check out. Uh, and then I got to get ready to go to Florida today I'm doing a meetup down there and I want to go check out a bunch of stuff that's going on with MLF and some other things I'm going to share with you in another video but uh, I've got my coffee here uh, recharged at least it's not cold it's gonna be drizzly out there but let's go see let's go see if we can um, 
get into some crappies, maybe some white bass. One of y'all sent me some crappie jigs, stuff like that I've been wanting to try out too. So um, I want to go give that some time, maybe fish under some docks, things like that. Without further ado, let's get out in the mist. Let's go try to get some din din for mama. She's been wanting some fish, so let's go see if we can get some. The mist, the rain, it's upon us heavily. Look out into the lake, it's just, it's like nothing. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do is fish some marinas first. Go back in some slips. I'm just gonna fish my way kind of through there. Uh, quite honestly, now that I'm out here, looks like a good day, good conditions to catch big bass. You know, it's not too cold. Uh, it's just like that misty nastiness. This is usually what big bass are caught, like nasty days in February, March in uh, Texas. So, I don't know. I might change my mind, but for now I'm I'm focused on the crappies because the water is just, just not the right color. I, I don't understand this. I don't understand why the water is so dark. I mean, it's misting right now, but we really haven't had much rain here lately. So, uh, especially on big Lake Texoma where there's hundred there's hundred foot of water you know I should know that because I studied ecology but I don't know the answers right now here's what I'm trying to do it looks like we got some fish on that uh, little rail system there cables and stuff like that I'm looking for bait the baits like 20 feet deep I'm gonna be looking on the side imaging to try to see fish up under the docks and just try to try to get a depth on them uh, actually, that looks like a small, small group of crappie right there, maybe. I was trying to get the camera out yesterday just to show, because there was like a group of bass right at the boat ramp that literally you could see the outline of the bass. It was crazy, uh, but I couldn't figure out how to take a snapshot of it. So trying to get to get to know this boat, get to know the graphs and everything. Another thing that might happen, I might want to go check out, is if the fish are moving uh, up the river, the white bass, Crappie do it too, but um, they'll move up the river channel and they'll spawn. Okay, time for some dangle. A couple of my little crappie boxes in here and some tasty selections. Definitely gonna go with something that's gonna stand out. I actually like the pink and white combo. Pretty big fan of that, but I think an electric chicken might be the dealio today. It's muddy water. We're gonna put this on our Yampa River trout rod. This is the best crappie rod I've ever used. And people that have fished for crappie for uh, for quite a while have told me that this rod is really, really good. It's just uh, it's a little pricey. It's like 300 bucks for that combo. So it's really, really sensitive. So I've got six pound fluoro on here. Eighth ounce. Actually, I think this is a 16th. That's a 16th ounce. A little pink head there. Godly, I'm right on one right here. Come on. Eat it. No takers. Dead damn it. They're not moving. They're just sitting there. Well, I'm not really sure there's a whole lot of man can be sure of anymore in this world. Seeing fish, not being able to catch them. Having this mega imaging is awesome, but then it's frustrating at the same time. Cause you're like, gosh dang it, I can see them, but I can't freaking catch them. I don't know. I tried lighter weights, tried going a different color. Uh, now I'm just going to change locations. I don't know. I mean, I felt for sure that was a stack of crappie, but... Heck, maybe it was like carp or something. I don't know. If I can't get bit by the crappie, I may move out and try to catch the white bass. I mean, look at these fish on the bottom. Uh, I guess those are like big carp. That's crazy. I think it's a little too cold for them to be running up in the river right now, but the last time I went over, the water <laughs> looked really good. It looked much clearer than the lake itself. So that could be another reason the fish might want to go up there, but it's such a far haul. I just don't know anymore. I mean, what do I have to do to get a bite, man? Uh, if I can come away with like five or ten white bass and zip lock them up, I'll, f I'll feel good about that at least. So, and I've got I got one of my favorite lures. I got a, uh, some of those I just ordered in uh, for just doing a slow 
up and down presentation that these fish like, so I might try that out really deep. There is no doubt though you can find them with this unit. You're gonna find some fish. You just may not be able to catch them. Oh, I might as well try to target a bass for a second. Even though this water's yoo-hoo and they're probably not gonna bite either. They're dropping this water big time, just like the other lake I was at. Same thing. White is a good color for uh, for a lot of water conditions, but since they're not gonna get a whole lot of flash, there's not sun, white will stand out pretty good. I think we got ourselves no go here on the bass. It's just not gonna work out. This water's terrible. So I gotta go get some meat. Gotta salvage the day here. I still wanna try crappies more. I'm gonna go try a few more dock areas but I want to get some white bass in the in the boat. Maybe I can catch one of those. Those are usually the most voracious out of the bunch. Looks like we already got some fishies on the graph there. Go ahead and lock that in place, see what happens. There's a lot of bait out here on this point. I can really see my lure good there. Just need to see it in front of some fish. It's like they scattered as soon as I dropped the trolling motor. I'm gonna try to re-get on some fish here because this this is not the juice huge group of shad right there there's got to be fish on that oh there's one had it just dead still oh that's good that's a good get in here boy you're going in the pan you are fat now these fish right here are gonna get ready to spawn here very soon so i'd love to do another video following them up the river because it's a lot of fun but there's still gonna be some down here munching for right now i've actually caught uh crappie on this death stalker lure too you don't want to do this right here they don't want that they just like a little a little pump there's a little small willow blade on the back I'm gonna let it go all the way to the bottom reel it up a couple cranks and then jitter it give it a little jitter this is my last ditch effort if I could just get me a couple more to put in a taco I'd be fine I think it's time to put it away and go to sunny Florida and see how fishermen are actually catching fish in some warm weather. This is just ridiculous. Shut her down. Failure. Such massive failure. I can't catch anything, y'all. One white bass in there. One. One. I mean, they school up by the hundreds. Sometimes, today, there's only like two or three together at a time. Crappie don't want to bite. Bass sure as heck don't want to bite. Not even the white bass want to bite. I just don't know anymore. I'm losing my mind. Gosh, what does it take? What does it take to get a bite out of here? I think this just confirms. I need to stay as far away from here as possible until about March. down don't worry that one white bass in there <laughs> it's going to the pan after all my anguish today that one's going in some butter and getting eaten for lunch because it is lunch time yeah i'm about to tell osg to fire me up some butter because i'm going to put this baby in the grease i haven't even cleaned it yet i need i need you to fire me up some butter in a skillet butter in a skillet does that mean we got some fish we have a fish, a fish and I'm going to eat it for lunch because it frustrated me so much. So you decided to take it home and eat it? Yes, I did. I was hungry anyways. I hardly ate anything. I had a couple of Eddie Bray's deer sticks. That's all I've had today. So we're going to get ourselves a skillet, fire it up, get the butter in there. I'm going to clean it real quick and then that's going to finish my day.
besides going to the airport, I gotta get packed and do all that. But I am done fishing for a minute. I guess the good news is I don't have to clean a bunch of fish. If I had caught a limit 25, I'd probably be late going to the airport. Ah, whoa. Yeah, it's still alive. I'll give it a minute. You should go tell your friends that I'm coming for them soon. Y'all have probably seen me clean a few fish in my day. And one thing I usually say is, I'll put them on ice, let them sit, let the meat firm up, because they're better that way. They are. But when the water's 48 degrees, you can just throw them right in there and they're, they're delicious. Now this is a female, just like I thought. You can already see the sacks. Well, there's our leftover fish. You can see the eggs right there, getting ready, getting fattened up, ready to go spawn. And we got two fillets just like this. Here's how it's going down. I'm turning the frown up today, upside down, with a little thing called butter. Butter in the skillet. Do your sizzling thing. And then we're gonna put the fish in there. Lightly uh, do a little peppering, a little bit of salt. Let it simmer in that butter. And then I'm going to take a fresh bun. Brioche. I'm gonna put that probably in a little butter. Just pss, pss, pss. Don't have any tomato, key. Don't have any tomatoes here at the, uh, the Healthy Chew Kitchen. Just wanna let that out there. Yeah, we got, oh, we do, we do have avocados? Yeah. Great, save the day. Then we're gonna put some mayonnaise on there, maybe a little special sauce and avocado, and that's gonna be our sandwich. I don't think I've ever done this with a white bass, so, I don't know, it just felt like a fish sandwich. I think you're ready now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Live it, Pepper. That all you need right there. Something we never run out of here is avocados. Give a little fattiness to our sandwich. Flipped it. You can never have enough butter. Put that on in there. Mm-hmm. Doesn't take long. Five minutes or so on the skillet. On one this size, you're good. Add a little cayenne surprise, make it Cajun style. That might be a little too much, we'll see. Just about done with the fish. We're gonna take our bun and sizzle it in the butter. Yeah, come on, work with me now. A little butter sizzle, get that little extra pepper in there. It's a tasty treat. And we're starting to split a little bit. Shrivel, we're good. Bread, not as toasty as I'd imagine, but it's good, it's warmed up. Place the fish on the bottom bun. Beautiful. White bass sandwich. Toasted buttered bun. Throw a bit of lettuce on here. Put some avocado, a little mayo. Scrum diddly yum. Gosh, I love cooking fish. Mm. What bam Gotta have ourselves a taste test now, y'all. Uh, this makes the work out there actually worth it. I feel like I did something here. It's actually pretty hefty. A little sandwich. Check that out. Beefy. Okay, let's take a bite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe went a little hard on the cayenne, but it is good. I would have preferred a tomato, but this is good the way it is. And it's pretty healthy. Avocado, fresh fish, a little bun, but now I feel like I did something today. One last big chunk of fish. It's gone. Taking some fish home and uh, cooking them when I first started this video, but today I wanted to get a whole mess of crappie. Didn't work out, but at least I got to have myself a delicious white bass fish sandwich. And now we gotta get packed up and get ready to go to Florida. We're doing a meetup down there, going to see some of you guys. And we're gonna check on the MLF. So thank y'all for tuning into this vlog. If you wanna come on down to Florida with me, go ahead and subscribe right here to the channel. And I will see you on the next one. Later.